Hey everyone, welcome to episode 8. So the next couple of videos are going to be dedicated to building our random map generator. Uh, before we begin though, I thought it'd be nice to show you essentially what we're aiming for. So uh, in the finished script in the inspector here, you can see I've got a couple of properties that I can play with. Uh, for example, I can define the size of the map in terms of how many tiles it has. And uh, I can just do general things like um, change the size of the tiles and play with the width of the outline around the tiles. Um, probably the most important thing though is this little obstacle percentage slider here, which I can use to just uh, populate the, the map with uh, obstacles. Uh, one important consideration though is that the, the, the map generator should always be ensuring that uh, the, the map is fully accessible. In other words, uh, it shouldn't spawn a, uh, an obstacle over here because then we have this sort of isolated region and if an enemy were to be spawned inside of there, then we'd never be able to get to it, so that would be frustrating. Um, so yeah, if, if I turn the obstacle percentage all the way up to 100, you can see it's, it's not actually filling the entire map, it's, it's still making sure that we've got this, this area that's uh, traversable, and I can generate um, variations on this by just clicking the Generate New Seed button. And uh, yeah, so then there are just a couple of uh, other aesthetic things that we can play with, for example, uh, can set a foreground and a background color, get some uh, interesting interesting combinations here. Um, also can mix the colors up like that. It's uh, maybe not the prettiest example, but you can get some cool things going. And uh, we can also sort of set random heights uh, so we can define a minimum and a maximum and then just have it, uh, have it sort of randomizing between that. So yeah, now that you've got a basic idea of what we are shooting for, let's, uh, let's begin programming this. Okay, so back in our project, um, I'm going to create a new scene uh, just to be nice and organized. So we'll uh, call this our map generator scene. And uh, we can just do all of our map generation stuff in here until it's ready to be implemented into the game. So I'm going to create a new empty game object. I'm just going to put this at 0, 0, 0. And I'll call this the map. And let's create a new script for the map generator. And we can just apply that to the map object and open it up. OK, so to start with, uh, we're going to want to create a public transform. Uh, for our tile prefab that we're going to be instantiating. And uh, let's also make a public vector 2 for the size of our map. And let's make this public method uh, generate map. Okay, so if we go back into Unity, let's, uh, let's set some of these things up. Um, I'm going to be using a quad for my tile prefab. So uh, let me just remove the mesh collider component from that. And I'll rename this to uh, rename it to tile. Okay, uh, as you can see, by default, quads sort of face forwards, so we'd want to rotate it by ninety degrees on the x-axis in order to get it to lie flat on the ground. Um, so, okay, let me drag that into my prefabs folder, and delete it from the scene, and add the prefab as my tile prefab, and I'll just set the map size to maybe something like ten by ten. Okay, so back in the generate map method, we're going to want to loop through our map size. Uh, so we can loop through first on the x-axis by saying for int x equals zero, while x is less than map size dot x, we increment x by one. Do the same thing for y. Uh, let me just copy that and rename x to y and change map size dot x to map size dot y. Okay, so we're going to want to, first of all, calculate the position at which we're going to be spawning the tile into the world. So vector three, we can call this tile position equals new vector three. So to calculate the leftmost edge of our, of our map, we can say negative uh, map size dot x over two. And if we were to spawn the tile in at that position, it would put the center of the tile at that position. So we actually want to shift that by 0 0.5 to put the edge of the tile at that position. And then we just add x to that so that it uh, moves along with each, uh, with each step in the loop. For the y-axis, we can just put it at 0, the ground plane. 
and uh, for z we'll basically want to do exactly the same thing as over here but of course using uh, negative map size dot y uh, plus 0 0.5 plus y all right and then we can say transform we can call this our new tile is equal to and we'll be instantiating the tile prefab at the position we just created and remember we want to rotate it by 90 degrees so that it lies flat in our game world so quaternion dot and uh, let's translate this into Euler angles so we can say quaternion dot Euler and uh, we say vector 3 dot right which is the x-axis multiplied by 90 all right so let's uh, save and see if this is working getting an error here I always forget to do this. Uh, we need to cast our instantiated object to a transform so that it sort of agrees with this over here. Okay, so let's press run and uh, okay, <laughs> nothing's happening, but uh, that's quite expected because nothing's calling generate map. Let's let's call it from our start method. Okay, generate map. Uh, there we go run it now and here we go we have a uh, nice map um, it looks like I've forgotten to uh, to divide my map size on the y-axis by 2 because it's uh, it's not centered so let's uh, let's run that again all right so now it's centered nicely and we've got this map that's uh, created out of a bunch of tiles so of course at the moment you can't actually see that they're individual tiles so let's uh, let's create a public float outline uh, call it outline percent uh, perhaps and uh, we can just clamp that to a range of 0 to 1 all right and then after creating our tile we can say new tile dot local scale is equal to vector 3 dot 1 and we can multiply that by 1 minus our outline percent so if outline percent is 1 then the entire thing will be outline because the local scale will be 0 so let's try this out set my outline percent to maybe 0.2 run and yeah we've got uh, we've got a nice little tiled map set up now uh, it's it's frustrating every time I make a change having to run the game again so uh, we're going to create a little editor script that will just sort of keep on calling this um, so that it will refresh. Now, of course, since we're going to be doing that, uh, we need it to actually destroy all the tiles that it's created um, before creating them again. Otherwise, we're going to end up with millions of tiles in our hierarchy. So uh, we want to create an object to store all of the tiles under. So let's create a string which we can call holder name and we can just call this uh, the generated map all right so this is this is simply the name of the object that we're going to create to store all of these under and then uh, we can say if transform.find child uh, with the name holder name so if if that object exists then we're going to destroy it so we'll say destroy immediate transform dot find child holder name and we get the game object because you can only destroy game objects. And the reason we're using destroy immediate by the way instead of just normal destroy is that since we're going to be calling it from the editor uh, we have to use this destroy immediate version. All right so after destroying it if it exists then uh, we're going to create a new map holder transform map holder equals uh, new game object and we can pass in a name which will be the holder name and we can get the transform component of that and then uh, let's also just put this map holder under our current transform so we can say map holder dot parent is equal to this transform and when we generate our new tile we say new tile dot parent is equal to the map holder so what we have now is simply when we run the game under our map we get a generated map object and under that is organized all of our tiles 
Nice. So let's create an editor script, which means we need a new folder called editor. And this is not just me trying to be organized. You do have to put it in the editor folder. And we can call this our, um, let's just call it our map editor. All right, open that up. And at the top here, we're going to want to say using a Unity Editor, and instead of extending mono behavior, we are going to extend the editor. All right, so we need to say which class or which script this is an editor for. So we say custom editor type of, and we give it our class, which is map generator. Okay, and we can remove all of this stuff. The only method we want is a public override of the on inspector GUI method. And we can start off just by calling the base method so that it uh, draws all the default stuff. And then uh, we want to get a reference to our map generator script, which we can call, uh, we can call map. So that's equal to target, which is the object that this, that this map editor um, is an editor of. And we want to cast that as a, as a map generator script. All right, so now what we can do is each frame we can say map dot generate map. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this out. Um, it will only run uh, while this map generator is open. So uh, if we go into another object, that won't be running. And uh, yeah, you can see we can play with this nicely now and it updates in real time. So that's, that's a, huge, a huge help uh, when we're trying to design our levels. All right, uh, that's, that's everything for this episode. And uh, yeah, see you in the next episode. Cheers.